Welcome everyone to the Eve Growing Concept. Today's video is going to be a carbon-based composting pile. We're starting with just carbon. Minced leaves, possibly minced hay, whatever it is that you're using, um, wherever you live, whatever carbon you have that you can mince up fine, um, you start with carbon and you start with a full bin. It isn't about layering it. You start with a full carbon-based bin and then yeah. you add your nitrogen. It's the nitrogen that helps you regulate these heat. It helps you keep these consistent heats. And right now I've made a, a, a huge mistake. I was going to do a video where I, this right now is a 4x4 four four composting bin. 4x4, four four, about 3 feet high is, is all you need. You don't need to have a big one because what I was trying to do is I turn this into a 4x8 in the hopes of getting the same temperatures that I got with a 4x4, four four, 3 feet high, 4 feet high. And it didn't work. My temperatures dropped down to 120, which is still good temperatures, but it's not the 140, 160 consistent heat that I was trying to I do. I brought it back to a 4x4 four four, as you see now, and I'm back up to my 160 degree, over 160 degree temperature. The way I'm getting 160 is because it's carbon based and I'm manipulating that carbon with the nitrogen in a liquid form. And I think it's easier for the nitrogens usually are very heavy. That's the heavy part of a composting pile is the nitrogens. If you're using a manure in its whole state or any compost in its whole state and try to mix it to get that temperature prior to that, layer it type thing, it's very heavy. And then that temperature, you lose the temperature, right? Like any pile, that temperature goes down after the microbes are done working. With a carbon-based composting pile, I feel it's easy to keep those consistent, consistent heats like you do with a normal composting pile. But I think it's easier like stoking a fire. You can tweak it easier. And one way I do it is I drive a, a rod down inside when I want to get some nitrogen way down here or over here, pinpoint it throughout the pile. What I do is I drive this iron rod that's in back of you here and I put it into the pile and I make a little hole and I pour my um, slurry that's teeming with all kinds of microbes in there. So I can dedicate that heat, I can manipulate it and if it goes down, let's say I need some carbon, I can still do the same with the hole and then put some, let's say some minced cardboard in there or more minced leaves in there and I think it's, a, it's more like a, a fire, a hot fire taking care of a hot fire to stoke it. So I think this carbon um, based composting pile is unique. I only see a few people doing it online. The people that are doing it, there's a few key things that you need to know about. First of all, you have to have your, your, your composting pile covered because one massive rainstorm will um, get too much nitrogen into your carbon. It'll ruin the whole pile altogether because it's too wet in the middle. So. You want to keep it so that's covered. That's one key with a carbon-based composting pile. You've got to have it covered. And what's another thing I was thinking of? Sides open. So you don't have to cover your sides. You want the sides. You want the air to what little air to get in there. I did a, a, a real quick experiment where I buried a bottle inside the, um, the composting bin and another bottle on top filled with water. And I was getting nice heat out of that, out of that bottle. I didn't have a thermometer at the time. I now have one, so I'll be doing some more, an external thermometer. I'll be doing some more um, testing on and that. I did try to um, make this pile bigger. I did kind of get inside that pile to really look at what's going on inside the middle of it. So here's some video of that. But it's, let's let's really get to know what's going on with this hot pile. My, the middle of the pile. You don't normally do this. I should have my gloves on. Oh, by the way, it's always important to wear gloves and eye protection when you're doing any of these experiments because you could get something in your eyes and, of course, all the stuff we're dealing with is so dangerous at times or can be potentially dangerous with all the bad pathogens that could be in here. So always wear gloves. I just don't want to go out of this cage and get my gloves that I normally do have, but I don't as I say, not as I do. So gloves and eye protection is always important to do. And I try to do that when I can, but sometimes I get so excited with an experiment that I don't take the time to do that. And I got in this cage before I could get my gloves and my eyeglasses that I have right outside this gate. And I should get it because something could happen right now. If something does, you are seeing it firsthand. 
We're going in. Let's see what's going on here. My pile is starting to drop. It's hot right here. You could feel hot right here. How's that looking? Okay. The lighting is very good right now. Look at that. That can you see that? That's like burnt. This is burnt, guys. That's how hot we're going here. And notice too, if I was to add like cow manures or any kind of uh, uh, nitrogen-like um, gardening stuff, if I was to add that, oh my God, that almost that was dangerous. Did you see that? No, but if I was to add any nitrogen, I wouldn't be able to dig through this as easy, right? So it's kind of easy to dig through there. Which is kind of neat. It gets really hot right here. I feel some really warmth there. And I'm using my hands because I want to really see the heat about it. But this layer right here, for some reason, we got burnt. This looks like it's almost burnt. I don't know what the heck that is. But it's burnt. I don't know how that got in my pile. We're not supposed to have big things in there. You're supposed to have only minced compost. Who put that in my pile? So the bottom of this pile, not too far in, Really nice and hot. Yeah, this is the wrong tool for this. I need more of a pokey thing. Oh, Mark, why don't you try the other end? So inside that hole, let's say a basic thing to do with the heat that could have major implications for many people, many animals or something like that. Farm animals, I'm thinking. Barking dogs. Mm -hmm. I can tell my dog, like my last dog, to stop barking a million times. And they still do it. That's so nice and hot. Right here is burning hot. I can't even touch right there. And we're about probably a foot and a half in. Oh yeah, that was and of course, there's nothing in this pile that's going to live in it. So you don't have to worry about any rats. Smell right now, guys. I'm telling you what. This deep in, it smells. All that slurry. It smells great. It smells like earth. Cooking earth. Like a nice smell. There's nothing gross about it right now, anyway. He's going to go deeper. The lighting is perfect. God, I, when I started this video, I was just going to dump it all in here so you see. You've already seen that, the moisture up. Now we're going into the middle. How exciting is that? It's easy to dig. And as I've said, you couldn't do this with your the typical uh, composting pile. You couldn't move it around as easy because it'd be so bulky and, and uh, harder. It cools, cools down quick, but that kind of like a warm electric blanket, it feels like. Oh, I wish it Flurry does get in all the nooks and crannies. That's the beauty about this uh, carbon-based composting bin and the slurry that you add as the nitrogen is you can control more. You can control the temp better, I feel. I don't know. Again, I'm just open sourcing it um, and I, I'm still new at it. Last year's pile amazed me. This year's pile, I definitely wanted to mess with it. One thing gardening has ta taught me is patience. I am not a patient person. I like things done fast, but with gardening, you always have to wait. You gotta wait for your tomatoes to seed and grow, and then you don't get it, you don't get the end result, or at least with my Eve Towers, I don't get the end result until um, it, like the, it, late in the summer, right? Then we finally get to eat a tomato. So I, I'm really anxious to see. I mean, the it's, system's working now, and one day I'm gonna have to get into canning and jarring if I wanna really get into this, this uh, Eve growing concept. Oh, God, that's, yo, that's hot, man. Of course, Mark, you're dealing with a carbon-based composting bin. 
I guess that's all I have to do, right? What else we got to see? I'm almost halfway into the pot. I love it. Quite amazing. I notice just some burnt. It does get burnt. Look at look at that uh, burnt part of it. I'd love to see if this got up to 200. That'd be amazing. But I don't think. I think 160 is the ba the most you can get out of it so far. If, if anybody can think of another way to get even more out of it. That'd be great. One of my questions I had in my last one of my own is if I just added water without the slurry, would it work? And I don't know the answer to that question. I think the microbes and all the slurry is really helping heat up the process. That's what's really helping me manipulate this pile, this heat as I want to. And I can't wait to figure out all the different ways. In my head, I'm constantly thinking, how am I going to get that heat outside? The same heat. I, I wouldn't mind if it dropped down to like maybe 155, but I want 160 even outside the pile. But inside the pile, we're getting 160. So this experiment is about experimenting with that heat and what we can do on that the, the simple, most basic thing we could possibly do. And <laughs> Wow, that's, that's hot. Hot and earthy smell. It's not a gross slurry smell, as I've said. For some reason, when you mint stuff down, or the slurry is not quite as bad as when it was in its full mass. People probably all, all know that, but I'm just figuring it out today. Sorry. All right, that's it. I guess you get the gist of it. So basically, the stuff we could heat up whether it's an outside animal, maybe it has some stray cats you feel bad for and you want to heat them up. We're going to talk some about that to keep them warm. So you don't want them in the house, but you want them still in the yard. Uh, feral cats and stuff like that, where they have a place where they can go and get nice and toasty. So my hands, of course, my nails are all dirty. I'm going to take extra caution. Extra, I'm going to take extra time to really clean my nails out because I didn't wear my gloves. And I did kind of fib to you. I, I forgot, I did have at least sunglasses in here. I don't know if they'd protect me too much for anything that might have shot into my eyes, but it really is. In all, in all um, uh, truth, you should be wearing glasses and you should be wearing gloves whenever you're handling stuff that is questionable. Of course, with the Eve Grown concept, the stuff that I've been composting or fermenting is questionable. All of it is, and I know that. And to those who think I don't wear gloves and stuff like that, all my videos show that I wear gloves. But um, I talk about it on my Facebook links. You know, people who watch my videos say, oh my God, he's not talking about gloves. Well, if you came into our Facebook link where we do talk all about stuff like that, dangerous pathogens that could be in our piles and all this, we do talk about it. We are mindful of it. We're not idiots, as some would think, or yeah, maybe we are, I don't know. But we do think about it. It's open for discussion, everything I'm doing here. It's not, it's nothing. I'm not the end all be all. Um, organic grower that could potentially bring down the whole organic movement if I um, because I don't wear gloves or glasses which I always try to do but my stuff is questionable and so isn't this pile with the slurry I put in there so isn't everything so isn't it the chemicals that we we put in our drinking water after we've done flushing all our nastiness down the sewer and stuff like that and have to go through all the cleaning process and the chemicals there's a whole different avenue there I think I've done enough with that whole um, it cools down fast, I've noticed. You know, once that air hits in there, it's the, the compact air that just can't move around in there that stays hot. But once you open it up like this, it all just stays warm, but you can tell it cools down very quick. So that's something to note. And if you see something else that I should be noting here about it, let me know. Look at how easy this goes in like this. All the way down with a carbon-based composting bin, you just can get it in there nice and easy, right? Make a hole here, and you can pinpoint your nitrogen. Just like that. That's going to go all the way down. So you get more heat throughout the pile. I think it's important to have a 4x4x3 four by four by feet high. I don't know. I think this is 3. 4x4x4 four by four by four even. You want it to be a compact pile. You want it to be high. And um, if you got a bigger space, you want to heat, I think, two. You, you, you do two of these. But you, it's for me, when I made it to a four by eight, it was very difficult to keep the heat up to 160 degrees or 140 to 160. It's more about fluffing 
the pile once you get the carbon when when it's all carbon it's about fluffing it up is there a difference mark i don't know it just seems easier you know nitrogen in the, in its whole form whether it's a pumpkin or whatever it is squash when you throw it in its whole form, manures cow manures horse manures becomes very heavy that's the heavy part right the carbon is the light part so it kind of makes sense that it's a carbon it's a pure carbon and then your nitrogen is added like that and i guess i'm talking on a residential s scale here uh, folks i'm not talking on a commercial level if you're on a farm or something i'm talking about competing with a farm yet still being in a residential area with stuff that you have the nutrient rich slurry that i'm pouring in here is just from my house compost and of course the house compost i feed to my reds as i've said in other videos also in other videos i've said red wigglers will eat absolutely everything there is nothing that is off limits it's all about presentation we talk about power composting and mincing our compost down to the smallest possible pieces now you don't have to do this with a garbage disposal you can do this with a flat ended spade and i know other vermiculturists are doing this and it's a great way to prepare your worm food some worm farmers put their compost in the freezer first before feeding it to their reds. Now this is totally unnecessary in my opinion. If you just put some slurry into this minced compost, it's doing the same thing. It's softening everything up. These worms again have little mouths and no teeth, so you have to feed them accordingly. Let this set for a few days and when it's time to uh, separate the solids from the liquids, you use, a, I, I'm using a cotton t-shirt here that I eventually feed to my worms, but you can use a paint strainer. I've used that and I'll put some videos down below, links of stuff that I've already done on the subject. Now the solids, of course, gets fed to our red wigglers. And this is my worm farm in the basement, as many of you know. And all your animal waste. Mix that up into a slurry and start growing some microbes. That is the whole goal of turning it into a slurry. The more microbes that you can pour into your carbon-based composting bin, the better. Excalibur. But I have a couple ideas of how we can heat, get this heat from inside outside. There we go, see? Nice and hot. Nice to see it hot, right guys? That's that. Have I covered everything? Let's make a little hole in here. So when it, so when it rains, when my tarp is on there, that rain will stay on there and put some weight so what have we learned right now? First of all, you gotta cover your pile. Second of all, it's good to have it slope in the middle so that weight helps bring it back down. Carbon-based, totally minced leaf to the top, pack down as much as you can. When it goes lower, put some more minced carbon on top of there. And the way I did that slurry, if it's too wet down there, if you feel, you make that same hole and you throw some more minced leaves in there so you can regulate your pile more. What else did I wanna say? I'll think about it and I'll I forget what else I want. It's funny when I'm on camera, I just forget everything I want to say. I get excited about stuff, but then I forget about it. It's like it's like a um, deer with the headlights. You get like duh, 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 duh. I think of stuff as I'm editing my video, so then I edit it in there. So that's that. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. Visit. I'll put some links below on my vermenting Facebook and my. Um, Eve Growing Facebook and my, Tom, my Mark Thomas Payne. Friend me there as well. All the links will be down below. Other videos on a carbon-based compost pile will be, there'll be links below. Last year's pile, a little more than a year old. If I didn't grow vegetables and to put it in my tower, I'd just spread it on my lawn. 